to take a journey with the black dragon i said prepare, prepare yourself, yourself to, to take a journey with the black dragon this morning on black dragon biker tv prepare, prepare yourself. yourself because we are here it's monday it's monday it's monday and i'm 61 years old i'm a gray beard look at that here gray beard it means that you should listen to everything. <laughs> Prepare, Prepare yourself. You'll listen to everything I say here on Black Dragon Biker TV. And we're here Monday through Friday on the greatest news, biker news channel in all the world. We've outlasted them all and we're still here. And I'd like to say thank you to all my new subscribers. While I introduce my co-host, my boss. What's going down, y'all? Monday through Friday. Here we are. Monday through Friday. Having a good old time. Oh, man. Sometimes we even run. On the nation's number one biker news channel in all the world. In all the world. So, like, share, and subscribe. And you can get us on all of our platforms as we talk about biker news or news in the world as it is seen by the biker point of view. We're bikers, not choir boys. So join along and treat the whole world with respect. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> well done. Great intro this morning. Bikers, not choir boys. And prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. And happy birthday Prepare again. Yourself. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself for your birthday. <laughs> That's legendary. Not not when you uh when you're 61, you're unprepared. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. That's the birthday you're I not feel prepared. like I'm unprepared now and I'm coming up on my 29th. It feels yeah. weird. 
I remember when I was 29, I felt old. <laughs> I feel old too. It's funny. I, I felt old. I, I would tell, oh, you're so young. You don't know anything. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. no. Um, it's so strange. No, I, I did not know that I would live a whole 40, almost 40 some years more. Right. Yeah, it's incredible that we've made it like every day since my accident it's been a blessing you know it's everything's a bonus i wasn't even supposed to make it yeah. yep everyone's showing that love hey speaking of all this music and stuff like i see everyone that's in here going man i need some theme music like that yeah see look at that black dragon i also got myself a new theme song yesterday so so um I want you guys to know, I did not make any of my theme music. You guys made it. My subscribers made my theme music. And I don't even know if the guy who made this theme music. I don't think he's even it. seen it. Seen and we've it been yet. playing it for a minute. Yeah, I need to call. I need to give him a holler and tell him uh, <laughs> um, that you. Hey, bro. Um, yeah, we appreciate you, but we but, haven't yeah. seen you. I have a few that I've got like four now that were made for me through the year. I think one day I'll play them all and they're all cool. I love every single one of them. And, uh, I, thank you. I just say that I got, I get the coolest stuff from subscribers. I, you did. I get the coolest stuff from subscribers. They send me the coolest stuff stuff like i don't there's there's no way no one no one gets cooler stuff than me um like here's where's my other thing here where's my oh yeah look at this look at this 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 just totally cool stuff my, my subscribers are the coolest in the world look at that this is this is this is sub subscriber gear i call it they send me all kinds of cool things. Look at this. This is my own buck knife. Made. This was made by the... The whole knife was hand forged out of uh, tungsten steel. You got to love it. Tungsten is the strongest metal there is. Oh, is it? Yep. Uh -oh. The only thing that can cut it is diamond. There you go. So this is... This was made like the... He made the whole thing. He made this. The he whole... Made Everything. Another guy made this. The my, sheath. yeah, the sheath. Thank you, sheath. Um, I just I have drawers full of stuff that uh my subscribers have sent me. Uh, rings. One percent rings. I got I got some one percent rings. Those got me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what happens. Well, I didn't ask for it. I, the guys. Hey, listen, I make rings. Can you show this on your show? I put the one percent of ring on. Hey, look at that. Yeah, Next and then all of a sudden, know. boom. <laughs> Next thing I know, Marcos has made a, a video. Black Dragon's wearing a one percent ring. Get him. I was like, that was so what? ridiculous. Why well, don't you I, get me yourself? That's <laughs> just a shit starter. You know what I mean? <laughs> Come get and me. And Chester yourself. says that's some medieval shit. Yeah, it is. That is. <laughs> yeah, this. Oh yeah, with my dragon's talons. I'm yes, gonna be selling the these. Talons. I, I'm gonna be selling these now. This guy, um, the person that sent me this uh, uh, redneck motorcycle whips, makes all kinds of motorcycles, but he's making these specifically for me and my viewers. That's so if awesome. you want a dragon whip with my dragon's head on it and what I call the dragon's talons, there's no way there. that's legal over here in Cali. No, no, no. This <laughs> with the brass knuckles is all is. 10 years in the prison. Just that, yeah. Just that alone. You might have some issues. But in Georgia, <laughs> you could put this on your belt and walk around through the mall with it. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's the difference. It's crazy. It's, nobody's gonna nobody's gonna be messing with you. And nobody's gonna um nobody we don't have mall shootings and stuff here. Now I I, I wanna knock on wood before right. I start. <laughs> I know guys from there goes your dog as soon as you started knocking. Both of them. Hey, okay. That was me. That was me. Mm -hmm. oh, Stop. That was me. I'm sorry. Stop. Stop knocking. Stop barking. Oh, shit. Oh, 
Uh, someone said they know somebody from Redneck Side. Yeah, My, Hardwire. Great, great whip, great people, local here where I am. Yeah, man, they they he he is uh, such a great person and. Um, I, I plan to have these on my website. Um, How do you not have it on your website yet? That's crazy. I just, man, I had everything Look, come Brian up. Brian is saying I want one. Look at that. For, who said I want one? First of all, I had to finish my book. Then I had to go on tour with the book. And then, um, you know, all this stuff came up. And then we had the, uh, the one percenter unity stuff going on. And I've been dealing with that. So now I think I have some time to, I'm getting on my next book. Uh, MC Protocol 101. Yeah, we got all kind of stuff going on, man. That's what's up. Um, but anyway. But in there's, any news. There's, <laughs> yeah. There's some news today. Uh, I got to find it. Very interesting news. Is that it? That's this it. Is, it. Um, mm-hmm. is this the one you wanted me to do, or did you want me yep. to do all three of them? Nope, this one. All right, so um, I haven't read this one yet. Uh, this one came to me from Mike this morning, so we'll be reading this together. But it it appears where where is the title for this? Uh, right at the top, right there. Quite clearly, this. No, was... that's not that's not the title. Here's the title. We'll take this title from a different story. Man with ties to the pagan motorcycle club. At least they didn't call it a game. Man with ties to the pagan motorcycle club. Pagans motorcycle club found guilty of murder in the Marian nation. Now you always know when you're dealing with civilians that don't understand biker culture, this is why they'll never cover motorcycle club news the way we do. This is why they hate us because they can mm-hmm. never cover motorcycle club culture the way we do. Look how they spelled pagans here. This is not how you spell yep. pagans. Motorcycle. Right. So um, we already know that they don't know what the hell they're talking about already. They, you can't even spell the people's names right. But anyway, here's another one. This is a, a whole nother. So this is one news organ, uh, organization right here, uh, which I guess is called Metro News. And they spelled pagans wrong. And then we come all the way over here and they spelled pagans wrong. Yep. So what, let you, what you know about that is they're getting this off of a wire. Totally. And they're pulling the story down off that wire. Yep. And that wire spelled it wrong. So there's a few wires out there that we su- subscribe to and... You can, you can, and they see. send well, it out to the masses. You know, that's essentially what they to, do. To the, to the people that subscribe, that pay the money, right? And then, so when you have when you have these wire stories, um, if they're misspelled or whatever the case may be, and what these guys will do is pull them down and then change them up a little. So it's just each one's a little different, but it's the same story. But anyway, uh, quite clearly, this was club business. Pagan's motorcycle club member convicted of murder and slaying of a man who had an affair with his girlfriend. Wow. That's what it comes down to. Ha. So here's a picture of the guy. And this looks almost like a video, doesn't it? But it does it, almost, yeah. I, I clicked on it. It's not a video. Uh, but this was on some 12 News at 6 Fairmont. I don't want to find this, Mike. See if you can't find this real quick um, to see if we can see the video. This was on a video somewhere. But anyway, uh, John Lee Wolf pictured in court was found guilty of orchestrating the murder of Henry Silver, uh, it says, uh, Henry Silver inset. Courtroom screenshot from WOY 12 News, YouTube victim's photo from GoFundMe. Okay, so here's, this is the victim's photo here, I would imagine, and they got that from his GoFundMe page. And this is the picture of John Lee Wolf. A member of the Pagans Motorcycle Club in West Virginia was convicted of orchestrating the murder of a man who had been having an affair with the mother of his child. These guys will kill you over a woman, man. Absolutely, they will. Dudes Any, cannot. A lot take, of people will. <laughs> dudes cannot take goodbye. It, dudes cannot take. I'm not effing with you no more, bro. Bye That's bye. Right. I found me another dude. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's like this. It goes last, last. I had this, girl- <laughs> I had this girlfriend who was absolutely one of the most incredible people to me in my whole life. She treated me so wonderfully. 
she was uh, a young thing. I was about 50. She was about 32, 33. Beautiful girl. Chocolate goddess. I was blessed to have her. She was everything. But I, I didn't know how to behave. I didn't know how to behave. And so Nashira left my black butt. High and dry. Uh, what did you do? I just, I, I wasn't right. I was a biker, not a choir boy. And she wasn't playing that S-H-I-T. But you haven't changed in any of that regard. You're I'm still a biker, not a choir regard. boy. I, I still have, you know, I still have something now. <laughs> Listen, it's always been hard for me to maintain. I, you know, I like I like the pagan way. You know, I want seven or eight. I wives. want I want them wives over there. I yeah. want them wives over there and those there, and I want to. You know, I want some wives and things. You know. So Eric asked a good question: Was it his wife or just a, the mother of his? Well, kids? they said mother of his kids, so they that's what they meant. Yep. So anyway, I had this girl, and and uh, she left me. So I got this enterprising idea. I would go down with a dozen roses and some flowers and some chocolates and stuff, and I would win her back. Simp. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so, oh, shit. Oh, shit. my best friend, Alcatraz, who's a club brother, says, Black Dragon, go back and get her back. Go get so her. I'm on my way down there. I'm go rolling. I'm rolling. And the father of the Black Sabbath Nation calls me up. And he says, son, where are you headed? I'm on my way to get Nashira back. I believe I can win her back. And he said, son, I'm going to tell you something. There's another mule kicking in that stall. Another I like that. mule kicking in that stall? What the hell is this? <laughs> Green Acres? Do we, put, do we put shit back in her ass? You know what I mean? That's the, essentially what you're doing is recycling. And so... I says to her, to him, that's not true. And when I get down there to Macon, Georgia, what do I find? Another mule kicking in the stall. Oh, see, that would make people lose it, too, now, right there. I, I, I didn't shoot the guy. I didn't pew pew him. I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't, uh, I didn't get all upset or angry or nothing like that. There was, I left the stall and another mule is now kicking. Yikes. So I, I lowered my head in defeat and. All right, brother. Mm -hmm. Take I over. A, you can pay you know, for all that now. Yeah. And I, I, I marched on on. I went on on. And guess where I'm not right now? Not with her. And guess where else I'm not? Uh, not in jail. <laughs> and guess what I haven't lost? Your life? <laughs> or my freedom. Or your freedom. I'm, I'm doing good. That's I've right. Other, other women since then, I survived. I lived. And that's what I want to tell you guys. If you, you didn't make it up, out without killing I, anybody. I, 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 I was depressed. I cried. I was heartbroken. But. The man was heartbroken. I still have my freedom. I still have my life. My riches. Yeah, I meanwhile, she own. never skipped a beat. Yeah, uh, exactly. Not, they don't skip a beat. No, She's they not do not. In prison, skip, you're not going to be in Tree prison and her skipping some beats either. No. Nope. Yep. So a member of the Pagans Motorcycle Club in West Virginia was convicted of orchestrating the murder of a man who had been having an affair with the mother of his child. Now, listen to that wording. Mm -hmm. Orchestrating the mother, the, the murder. Orchestrating does not mean that he necessarily murdered the man at all. He well, was orchestrate, the, you know. He was the the what do they call that guy? The conductor. The conductor, yeah. He he had the the wand and he was doing the conducting. Where's my music wand? Oh, here it is, mm -hmm. right here. You know, I'm a conductor of sorts myself. There you go. Bring out your pencil. This is not a pencil. Pencil. This is a music wand. Yeah. There is no pencil here. That's a music wand or a chopstick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does look like a chopstick. <laughs> however, however you want to do it. But anyway, <laughs> he orchestrated the murder. John Lee Wolf was found guilty of orchestrating the murder of Henry Silver, 29. He was found guilty on Friday of first-degree murder. Oh. oh, I guess he did do it. He got found guilty. <laughs> he was found guilty on Friday of first-degree murder. 
conspiracy to commit a felony and use of a firearm in the commission of a felony, West Virginia Metro News reported. Four others face charges in the killing. Jesus. The murder happened in the apartment complex parking lot of Wolf's Girlfriend on September 9, 2022 in Carolina, West Virginia. A neighbor told local CBS affiliate WTV that there was arguing outside, someone was pacing, and a truck pulled up. All of a sudden, we're with our kids in the bedroom, and then we heard pop, 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 you know, which we thought was fireworks. And we looked out the window, and there was somebody standing out here with somebody who was shot on the pavement, the neighbor told the station. Wolf was arrested on October 20th, 2022, citing court documents. The Times West Virginian reported Marion County Assistant Prosecutor Sean Murphy wrote that the murder was carried out through the Pagans Brotherhood and Creed. Damn. Mm. And they spelled Pagans right there. He said the gang views girlfriends and spouses as property and affairs as property theft. Ah, uh, no, they don't. <laughs> you got to love how they do this. This no, is the media don't. for you. This is the That's... media for you. This is what they do. The gang views girlfriends and spouses as property and affairs as property theft. I have never heard that term in the motorcycle club of my whole life. Property theft. Oh, my God. Pro he stole my property. That, that's actually kind of funny, though, that, you know, it's funny that we haven't used that before, ironically. Property theft. I like that, though. That's hilarious. Okay, people, motorcycle clubs don't view girlfriends as property. Right. They view properties as property. You can be a girlfriend all day long and not be a property. In mm -hmm. fact, I know many clubs. And oh, by the way, Properties and property ofs are, uh, uh, here's our one percenter right here. Wow, that's messed up. You can tell that straight from someone who believes TV lies and myths. Mm -hmm. That's what we're here for, Hardwire, yep. to perpetuate those TV lies and Listen, And that's what they don't like about us. <laughs> Listen here, man. Um, and another thing, properties and property ofs are not, specific just to one percent or clubs many 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 99 percent clubs have properties 100 percent, and properties of yep and old ladies and house mm. mamas and and stuff you know where properties was not always the prevailing term right like uh, uh, like some clubs just had house mamas and some clubs had old ladies and other clubs had properties and and some have properties of and you can have a property of yourself specifically or properties of the club. To the club, right. Uh, you can have all these things. Uh, bad news sells papers, and it's always been that way. Nothing new. Yep. So Controversy the pagans, sells. The Pagan's Brotherhood uh, does not view, view girlfriends as properties. Motorcycle clubs view properties as, as properties. properties. And in order to be a property, you must, you know... Consent to that? Yeah. Well, sign the dotted line or whatever they have there. Swear in, sign in, agree in, something. <laughs> uh, it is a term of endearment, similar to a wedding ring. It lets people know you're spoken for, so they know to leave you alone and nothing more. Yep. See, what you have to understand on the motorcycle set is if, if you cannot protect your properties, then you are nothing as an MC. You're nothing as a man. So we 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 have properties on the back. It's it's a term of endearment. It it doesn't mean that you are now. I'm sure there are motorcycle clubs that have mistreated properties. Absolutely. Absolutely. There are motorcycle clubs that have mistreated girlfriends. Well, let me tell you something. There, good old what was his name? Lieutenant Wolf. Who who let me see who that was. Uh, Assistant Prosecutor Sean Murphy wrote uh, that the murder was carried out by the Pagans Brotherhood and Creed. He said the gang views girlfriends and spouses as property and affairs as property theft. You know what you you know what you motorcycle clubs need to do. You you need to hire a real 
motorcycle club gang expert. Me. You need to have me. You need to have me. Stop the cap. I'm announcing my candidacy now. Candidacy now. You motorcycle clubs, you need to be hiring me. Cuz you, you need a real expert on to come counter that some of this bullshit. <laughs> yep, I agree with that. You need, you need somebody to counter that. Like, bro, you absolutely know nothing about motorcycle club culture to get up there and say that and try to sway a jury of that mm-hmm. nonsense. And that's exactly what it is, swaying jury. You guys better you, you guys need to be giving me a call. You you got a court case, you need to be calling me. All right. Here you go. There's my number right there. 4469203360. Call the real motorcycle club expert. Call the Black Dragon now. Nice. Well done. Sh- shameless plug. No, that was <laughs> that was great. Getting ready to start my own motorcycle club uh expert service. Nice. Do gang it. Gang expert. What <laughs> they got well, they got all these gang experts. They do. With all this, they, you, might, actually, you might as well get paid for it. They get paid to go to court and spread this kind of noise, this nonsense. Gang views girlfriends as spouses. And I agree with that hardwire. Clubs, clubs definitely should have somebody that is dealing with, you know, the media, such as a P- PRO of some sort, you know, just somebody dealing with PR. Because a lot of people just decide not to, you know, <laughs> at all, which is fine. I get it, but... You know, which is why I wrote the motorcycle clubs public relations officers. Bible. Come and check it out, man. There you go. There you go. I wrote this book for that very reason because clubs do need PR people. BD has that title in his, in his yes, crazy anyway. what non club people will believe. Avalanche, well, the thing is, is a lot of the controversy will sell, a lot of people will believe something that's terrible rather than something that's good. Because that's what people do is they they assume the worst always. On to our orchestration of the <laughs> of the story. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, after he said, uh, he said gang the gang views girlfriends and spouses as property and if, and affairs as property theft, which is not a term anywhere in the motorcycle world. As the saying goes, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. The prosecutor wrote. Who who says that? <laughs> Is that part of the motto of your club? You know that they're definitely going to be throwing some stupid shit like I, that. I've yet to see that on a patch, on a on a motorcycle club patch. Right. Um, I've Black yet Sabbath, to see it either. Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Yeah. Yeah, you guys sound so badass. <laughs> Bruh. I'm having too good a time with this mm-hmm. uh, silliness. Anyway, uh, as the saying goes, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. The prosecutor wrote, the news outlet reported, these men shall reap what they sow with their beliefs and conduct. After Wolf learned about the affair, he talked with the local club chapter president about the need to do something to put a stop to it eventually. Teach Henry a lesson and get rid of dough, Murphy wrote. The Times West Virginia reported, Doe being the alias for Wolf's girlfriend. So they wanted to teach Murphy a lesson and get rid of the, his, uh, his girlfriend, his baby mama. Quite clearly, this was club business, the prosecutor wrote. The paper reported, quite clearly, this was organized murder conducted by a group of men who operate in a manner which is in keeping with the rules, regulation, and modus operandi of a paramilitary domestic terrorist organization. Saw that coming. Woo-hoo-woo. Mike, Mike. Saw that coming. These a guys paramilitary are ruthless. domestic terrorist organization. He threw it all on y'all's ass. Yep. Over there. Oh my gosh. Wolf's defense secretary of the Wolf's defense attorney, Scott Allen Show, and John. Colton Rogers, those are his attorneys, tried to argue against allowing the Pagan's evidence in the, to the case, the paper said. Mr. Silver was having an affair with his significant other, Rogers wrote, the paper reported, got into a verbal confrontation with Mr. Silver prior to the shooting, called a group of individuals to murder Mr. Silver on his behalf, and is also a Pagan. Mm. That That's it. 
That's where they leave it. I, I, that's what the defense attorneys are saying. Like, oh, that's all not, they're saying he's, there. He's done this, this, and this, and he's a pagan. It's it's not the pagans did this, this, and this. Right. It's not. You know, when you're when he just you're, also happens to be when you're in a motorcycle club and you get involved in something and or maybe a, a club brother or two or whatever the case may be, um, that doesn't make it like a, a, a motorcycle club thing. An entire organization's thought right. process and what they're following through. I, I'm no. sure the national president of the Pagans wasn't like, oh. yeah, boom, oh, get oh, 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 oh. Oh my goodness! Send the pagans emissaries. Right. <laughs> Send our domestic terrorist paramilitary group in. <laughs> uh, I just don't think that happened. Let's see what else they say. Uh, they said um, <laughs> he just happens also to be a pagan. Silver's family mourned this, the loss of the father of seven. His sister said on a GoFundMe page. That the Pennsylvania father, brother, son, and best friend was amazing. He had his whole life left to live, and it was stolen from us. And only, oh my God, Mike, just a year older than you, 29 mm -hmm. years old, she wrote. His obituary said he was an arborist who enjoyed playing guitar, riding all-terrain vehicles, fishing, art, and hanging with family and friends. What is an arborist? I don't know. I was going to ask you that when you finish that sentence. I think it has something to do with um, an outdoorsman or something. I missed that boy. He was my firstborn son, his father told WDTV. He was 29 years old, and they took him from us. Um, oh, man. What is an arborist? Does Do my people know out there? Our people normally know everything. The tree arborist. person? A tree surgeon. Yeah, so, boom. I knew it had something to do with the outdoors. I knew it. Hence, the whole thing about him, the de entire description was about him being outdoors, so that was a good guess. Uh, <laughs> true. <laughs> it doesn't make my guess any wronger. No, no, you were you are accurate. <laughs> so, you were accurate. Yeah. But uh, he was an arborist. He was an outdoor guy. He he loved the outdoors. He it was a tree surgeon. Yep. I did not know that trees needed Look at surgery. That. Tree surgery. Yeah. Anyone who performs surgery, I mean, trees don't have um. Yeah. Stop the cap, dude. Stop the cap. You see this? He's a tree, tree surgeon. Trees don't have um, uh, insurance. If you're a tree <laughs> surgeon, you're doing that. That's you need some free. you need some buco bucks for that you're, surgery. You're helping all right? out the world. <laughs> if you're a tree surgeon, you're doing great things. Uh, here's this GoFundMe page. Here, Henry Silver. Oh hell, they've only raised nine hundred seventy dollars. Uh, let us help with this, people. On uh, my 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 folks, let's let's help the family here. My name is Angela Silver. I'm starting a GoFundMe for our brother Henry Silver. He was an amazing human being, a father, a brother, a son, and a best friend. He was murdered in another state, and we we're asking for help and expenses to transport him back home and for funeral costs. He had his whole life left. He was stolen from us at only 29 years old. Please, anything will help us. We want to bring him home. So, um, yeah, let's uh, make sure. So, hey, Mike, I'm going to put this in the uh, description yeah, throw, box. Throw that in the chat. Yeah, there we go. You guys should oh. have that now. They sure do. Bam. All right. So, uh, yeah, that's the that's the very hard part about what we do is to talk is. about the young people that are gone, um, or anybody that that loses their life over BS. In my opinion. So we're not saying that Club Brothers didn't do this. We're not saying that um, you know one way or the other, right? Or charged that 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 were were not absolutely abhorrent in their actions but um but to call out an entire national motorcycle club over the poor behavior of some or several members or even a chapter is um we don't do that when police officers messed up like those cops that uh just went to prison a week ago or uh the goon squad cops right. that 
put a gun in a man's mouth and you, you don't see anywhere anyone saying that the whole police department believes that women are property and right blah 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 is property theft that we no one's calling them a domestic terror organization and a paramilitary domestic terror. But to the guy that got shot, his tongue shot off, he would tell you that's it's a paramilitary. Yeah, they're not, they're they're going based off the, the media's narrative. And of course, that's going to be protected by them. Now, listen, honestly speaking, if you're the other mule kicking in somebody else's stall, watch out. Especially, Mike, these guys from your age group. Totally. They, they, and not that, not that there ain't no fools in my age group. Cause there are, there but is, there is, they, but I get, I get what you're saying. The, a lot of these guys cannot take no for an answer. They come from when everybody got a trophy. They come from when every, when, when, when nobody could lose, when the wiffle ball bat game, right. Everybody got to run around the bases, whether they were able to hit the ball off the tee or not. Is totally. that called tee ball, wiffle ball, whatever they call that. It, tee ball. Yeah. So, so. It, it, you got to always ask yourself if somebody else's stuff is worth it. I remember uh, I lost a girlfriend. Her name was Bridget. She was a beautiful woman, as all the women I've ever tended to mess with are. Uh, she was absolutely amazing. Bridget was like a butterfly who had flown in upon the desert. Every time you talk about a woman, it's like the same story. It's crazy. Can I you love you love those women? I you know what? That's that's not true. I you find the beauty in every one of them. Well, not like my friend Leon Richardson used to, but yeah. But I almost mean, to that extent. He's a 10, you're a nine. You know what I mean? On that scale. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, she was she was as beautiful as if you were stranded on a desert island and in, in search of water. She was like a molecule of rain that fell onto your tongue. And you wished that you could have more, but only, there was no rain left. She was as beautiful as the day is long, as as wonderful as icing on a beautiful cake. I was nothing but a mere, a, a, a knave. I was a knave trying to get a princess, a frog trying to kiss a princess and turn into a prince when I was with her. And she left me. And when she left me, there came another mule kicking in the stall. Now, I went and I faced that guy. Did you? Face. Oh, yeah, I was going to. You are going to do yeah, something that you shouldn't? I was going to I was gonna wind up in prison. Oh, man. Yeah. Right there at her apartment complex, I, I there he was. And uh, I... Uh, I faced him face up. And you know what that guy said to me? What did he tell you? He said, hey, look, man, I got a good life, and uh, I enjoy it. If me talking to this woman is, and he says, I got a 12-year-old daughter, and I'm living a good life. And uh, he said, if me talking to this woman, that you're obviously still infatuated over even though she don't want your black ass me talking to her <laughs> is going to cause you to do anything crazy and I'll it's worth it of, for me no i'm I'll, just kidding i'll walk out of her life right now and not look back he told me that wow i'm not getting ready to get it on with you uh or any of that my life is really too great and you know what i did hmm turned around and walked away. He made too much damn sense. Yep. I yep. turned That's around. That's exactly what I was assuming was going to happen there. I turned around and walked I you know what? Yeah. No, no, you can with my blessing. Please let me orchestrate my my ass on out of here. Mm -hmm. I'm out. And I I I let go of Bridget and I've never seen her since. Was that a good thing or a bad thing? Oh man, the loss of her destroyed me. I was I was broken down for many years. I many years? We were together seven years. Holy shit. Yeah. I mean, was... I understand a month or two and you know, trying to get back on your feet. 
I mean, I had another girl almost instantly, but but the, you weren't the over it. Well, you know, when you when I lost her, I lost her entire family. Yeah, yeah. I lost her mom. I lost. It does happen. Her father. I lost her brothers. Well, actually, her brother and I are still absolutely great friends. This is now thirty years ago, and uh, he 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 calls me up on a regular, sends me uh, uh, stuff. Anybody else? <laughs> what did he say? Anybody else <laughs> playing the world's small, smallest violin right now? I don't care if Kerry Wayne doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, he calls me all the time. He's like uh, my little brother. The truth always comes out eventually. So, I mean, I've been here. I've been to, a, I have, I beat a guy up over a girl before. Haven't you? You got to write a book just on these women's stories. That's that's exactly <laughs> it right there, Joseph. You're right, Joe. 100%. He says, I need to write a book just on my women's stories alone. Listen. You should. You never beat up nobody over a girl? No. Boy, I have. I whooped a guy good. Uh, well, you either want Fender candy or you want your own cake. You can't have both, and it's that simple. Oh, I, tell that to the Branch Davidians. They got both. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Oh, man. Them and Warren Jessups and all of them. <laughs> Although, Brutal. poor Warren is in federal lockup, poor Poor dude. He was he yeah, went too poor. far. He, he went too damn far. You can only go so far. That's true. That is true. Anyway, all I'm saying is if you are messing around with OPP, you better ask yourself, am I ready to push up daisies over it? Because these guys will kill you. There's nothing more dangerous than a a man and his feelings. That's right. 100%. That's the they'll most move, dangerous person. They'll move a mountain. Yeah. Whatever they got to do to 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 get it stopped. To make their point across or whatever. Yep. Yeah, man. And uh, and now he's getting ready to spin. What did he get? What what was his crime? Or was he just found guilty? Did they give him a? Yeah, I don't. I don't convicted. remember you saying it. And uh, I don't think he's gotten his time yet. Whew. Man. Anyway, Henry Silver, uh, we're sorry you're gone, man. I did it. It doesn't even say Henry was a biker. It doesn't say Henry was a biker. No, nothing. They don't explain nothing in that. I didn't. It it, it just said he was an aberrist. Mm. Interesting. Tree surgeon. Yeah, tree surgeon. That's so crazy. There's that's not crazy. There are tree surgeons. Uh, trees get surgery too. They don't have insurance. <laughs> it all makes you think trees don't get surgery. I, I think they can surgerize on anything, you know? Anyway, back into the uh, news realm. A motorcycle club delivers meals to those in need, man, during Ramadan. Now we're talking. During Ramadan. Look at this. Hope bikers in Syria. Uh, so don't be thinking Syria doesn't have bikers that are doing out there doing good stuff, man. Yeah, Frank look at that. A man who can walk away. Yeah, and not everybody's claiming to be a man. <laughs> Members of the motorcycle club in Damascus, Syria, deliver meals to disadvantaged areas during the Muslim holy month of Ramadan. The club's 50 volunteers make and distribute food for various charities in the Syrian capital. Boy, look at this motorcycle on here. This is a nice motorcycle with flames coming off of it. Hope Biker, Syria. I think one percenters, they get to put the whole country on their back. Yeah, right. I, I like that. Members of the Motorcycle Club, Hope Bikers Syria, help prepare, distribute Iftar. Iftar. Uh, what is Iftar? I don't Fat know. Breaking meals during the Muslim whole. Oh, the, and I, Iftar, I believe, is the meal you get to eat after the fast. Oh, that makes sense. When, when you break your fast. I don't know if I'm saying the word right, but. Uh, Fast-breaking meals during the Muslim Holy Fasting Month of Ramadan in Damascus, March 25th, 2024. Every evening during Ramadan, members of the motorbike club zip down the streets of Damascus to deliver meals to those in need during this Muslim Holy Month. You know, what if you, damn, what if you ain't got no food and now everybody's fasting? <laughs> like, bro, I've been fasting for a minute. 
Let me yeah, forget it. I'm going I'm to eat right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get me something to eat. Mm-hmm. I, I knew this one. Uh, I knew this one Muslim guy who was a salesman. Uh, so he sold me my TV and uh, I went to go buy the TV from him and uh, we were talking and he, he kind of snapped at me. And Over what? I dropped back like, I will, I'll beat you behind. Hey, don't play with me in here. Like, don't, do not play with me over here at the, the, the appliances store. (laughs) I will toss you all over this thing. Mm -hmm. I was a little younger, Mike, still, you know, still tough. Before Mm -hmm. I was 61, I was in my 40s still. And he said, I'm sorry, Mr. Bunch, but you know, I'm fasting. And so I get a little bit. That was his excuse? Yeah. And he goes, holy shit. It's Ramadan and I'm fasting. And I, I look at him like, what does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, you know, during the month of Ramadan, we don't eat from sun up to sundown or something like that. And mm-hmm. uh, it ain't sundown yet. So I'm a little edgy right now. <laughs> and we're haggling over the blood sugar's low. This TV and uh, you're about to get your behind cussed out. That's hilarious. <laughs> and I, and I, so then I developed a, an appreciation for people that are fasting. Like, don't get on their nerves. You might get knocked the hell out out here playing around. Low so blood sugar help. is is uh, a killer. It's a mofo. It's a mofo. It's like messing with somebody's OPP. <laughs> so they help. They help out for human. T- uh, so they help out for humanitarian or moral reasons. Said Obiad, a swimming coach in his fifties who supervises the Ramadan rounds. The group says it has no political affiliation and crosses faith boundaries. So they'll they'll give food to Christians too. Uh, so they cross faith boundaries with Christians and Muslim members. So anybody uh, that needs it. Yeah. Uh, well, they said Christians and Muslims. They didn't say Christians oh, Muslims okay. and, and Jewish people. They might right. not give any to Jewish people. They'd be like, yeah, no, we're not giving you none. I don't know that. They said they have no. <laughs> right. There's only two two religions listed. That, that's all they listed over there. So I guess Krishna's might be out too. Members of Motorcycle Club, Hope Biker Syria, help distribute Iftar. And uh, they do this uh, to help out. They've been uh, part of organizing with non-government organizations, recreational activities for orphan children. Uh, members of the Motorcycle Club, Hope Biker Syria, also help distribute Iftar, fast-breaking meals. They cover the cost of fuel themselves, a great help in the country blighted by petrol shortages that drive up prices, particularly after subsidies were lifted last year. Mm. But uh, Hafata said the group was trying to return biking to its place in society, taking on our responsibility towards people. That's what bikers do, man. That's what we do, man. That's what we do. I like that. No matter where we are in the world, uh we we help out the world yep Look at bikers this. donate and have all this charity that no one talks about they donate yeah. more than anybody does i mean i don't see the uh, police department doing the same you know what i mean well their That's- life is a donation mike well, not necessarily. Lives on the line for us every day. And yeah, they but their their oath is different than someone that's in the military. They're not supposed to be dying. You know what I mean? They're they're not really putting their life out there. They'll tell you straight up that we are not going to die tonight. You know what I mean? So there's a difference putting your life, you know, on the actual line like that. Yeah, I mean, there's a different oath, different mindset going in. Totally. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Uh, here in this country, uh, where are we? This, uh, over 900 participants in Dalat obtained motorcycle license ahead of a ill filter. I wouldn't be able to say that, but 900 people came together like that. Yeah. And got their licenses. A total of 942 residents in Dalat breathed a sigh of relief as they can ride motorcycles during a filter next Monday, next month, without the fear of being summoned for not having a valid driver's license. A total of 738 participants who follow the program are from Dalat, Oya, while the rest are from Muka, Egan, and Muta Daro, said <laughs> Sarawak JPG, JPJ director, Norizan Jili. So there you go. I think that must be Pakistan. Yeah, that's somewhere over there in the Middle East. No, Pakistan, I don't think, would be called the Middle East. No? 
I I don't, but I don't know for sure. <laughs> I I don't. Uh, well, now you got me questioning it. I, I don't hilarious. know for for sure. Uh, but we can ask. Is is it considered the Middle East? And considered. Look at that. Somebody else asked it before. Of course. Of course. Is Pakistan considered the Middle East? Uh, Bush administration defined the greater Middle East as including the Arab states, Israel, Turkey, Iran, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. Wow. Uh, that's the Bush administration. Mm -hmm. Other concepts of religion exist, including the broader Middle East, the greater Middle East. So there's a broader Middle East and a greater Middle East. That's which weird. Which also includes parts of East Africa. Wow. Mauritania, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. I, okay, so I guess Pakistan is... Interesting. I would have called it Asia. You would have called it Asia? Right. I would have, I, but... I mean, just yeah. geographically looking, yeah. How do I know? We, we need to be looking at our, our, our people probably now. <laughs> <laughs> this is one our people know. Uh, good morning, Avalanche Chosen Riders. I see you there. Um, Shades are required. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness, Mike. I'm glad you brought that up. Today at 1.30 starts the eclipse. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's today. I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. The eclipse starts today. I and, totally um, forgot about that. Oh, it's at one something here. One. Uh, 11.30, I think it starts, and then it peaks at like 1.35. I've still been unable to get... A, a direct answer to that? The sunglasses. Mm. That's why we need Mike, uh, need BD and Mike on PR, because whoever's doing it now is failing. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Uh, my answer is, can you make your own Eclipse sunglasses? Yeah, I thought we I'm did sure this you in could. grade school with, with paper. Yeah, I'm sure you could somehow. Find a small box. Like, yeah. Use a, like use a welding a hood. A box or a shoe box. Cut two openings at the bottom of the box using tape. Cover one of the openings with a piece of paper or aluminum foil. Punch it with a small pinhole. Face away from the sun, allowing the direct light to hit the pinhole. I, we did this in grade school. Yeah. You I can make that. your own. Didn't you, you remember that? You can I make do your remember own, that. Uh, you uh, could also, as Bree says, you could also use a welding hood. <laughs> That's a good idea. I think a welding hood probably would help you. <laughs> yep. But I don't know that for sure. We can't say that. I don't want to nope. get sued. Nope. All of a sudden, it's like blind dragons. because of it. Totally. Yeah, <laughs> I like I like why Organic says, he says, I just use my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that man How see ed knows own... welding hood will work if it's a 12 darkness or darker interesting i know that's graded you know differently for sure uh well you're looking at that little sun all day long when you're welding uh if you don't have traditional solar eclipse glasses you can look through number four look here here it is you can look through number 14 welder's glasses. What did our guy say? 12 or better? Yep, 12. And okay. then Jared says you need a shade 13 welding helmet. And this guy here says you need a number 14 welder's glasses. So there you go. Crazy. There you go. People know, man. Yeah, I had no idea. Here's one. <laughs> you know, whenever I... <laughs> Whenever I talk about politics, you always get quiet. <laughs> you always yep. be like, no, I'm not letting you, I'm not getting in that one. Usually uh, I don't dive deep in politics, not online. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll allow you to take the stand here. Yeah, you never, I never hear you jump on Biden or, or Trump's bandwagon. I just nope. never heard you do that. Nope, uh, I, I your, refuse. Your former partner used to do it all the time. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. Multiple partners. Very open. Oh, yeah, yeah. All of your former partners. Mm -hmm. Oh, Hollywood was great at that. And look, you know, if it works for them, it works for them. That's great. But for me, I just don't want to involve myself in politics. I mean, I, I get you. you're I dividing get you. yourself unnecessarily. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get you. But some of these we have to do. Yep, I get that. I get so, that. So I saw this on your favorite biker this morning. He was talking about somebody taking baths with their daughter 
What? And how he, yeah, how he thought that was inappropriate to take a bath with your daughter. And I was like, hell no, you don't take a bath with your daughter. That doesn't make any sense. Absolutely um, not. You, you don't get I don't I don't even I don't even bathe or shower the babies like that. That's what the old lady does. You know what I mean? Like, 100% I, I just avoid it all 37% of taxpayers qualify. Oh, 1040 and limited my, tell them, Damn, dude. Just, just took over. over. Yeah. It's not just fair. Took over, man. Anyway, uh you say you got a daughter and you don't I wouldn't do I don't I don't bathe them. I don't do none of that. I that's what, you know, she does. I, I don't deal with that. I just never have. And, I always avoid any of that. And you know, Mike, uh, what I learned about that from Bridget's mother, Bridget, really? from Bridget the, the girl I was telling you about, Bridget, yeah. she's from Panama her, and she's a Panamanian family. And uh, when I was young, I was, I was in my 20s. I was your age when I was dating her. Mm -hmm. And, um, she told me that it was the mom's responsibility 100% for for bathing the girl children and stuff yes. and she said that that there's no reason that a man would need to bathe his daughters correct for any reason and mm -hmm. I, I i had never considered i was 20 i didn't have any kids at the time a lot I of never, people don't consider it i mean like I even k wins here going you know that's a damn shame, Mike. Well, I mean, I do everything else in my daughter's life except that. You know what I mean? Well, Bridget taught me that that as a man, you don't right. You don't do that. I, I agree with that. Wouldn't sh I? I would think past a certain age, like three, would be the cutoff for bathing sure. with your child. If you're going to bathe with your child, I. I don't see a problem with bathing with an infant child, maybe, but uh, you know, I don't. I don't see that you could should do that with. I I just don't see it. I don't see why there's a benefit to that. Like why you need to do that. Why 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 you need to bathe with a child? I, right I don't get with it. like that's yeah. ridiculous. So the reason that he brought that up, he started talking about Ashley's diary, and it's like, what the hell is he talking about? What is this? Ashley's diary he's talking about. Mm -hmm. What well, turns out that a girl, a lady, stole Ashley Biden's diary. Oh, shit. From a house Ashley used to live in. Now, it depends on what side of the coin you fall on. If you're a Republican, you say, no, she moved out of the house and the girl found the diary. And if you're a Democrat, you say, no, she found the diary, but she realized it didn't belong to her and that it actually belonged to the president's daughter. So mm. she went to go sell it, and that's theft. So I never I never on, heard this. I never heard of it either, because we don't really follow political news like no, that. No, no. So uh, anyway, the girl found this diary, or stole it, depending on how you see it. Sure. Took it to a right-wing news organization or so-called news organization and sold it with her friend. She she enlisted a friend and they sold it for $40,000. Whoa. Yeah. And Whoa. so they pled guilty to... They pled guilty to knowing that this belonged to the child of a pres guy that was running for the presidency. And they sold it to this news agency and the news agency was never able to... Uh, uh, um, validate that it was truly the diary, so they never published it. Hmm. But of course, being in a big news agency or whatever, it started to slip out. Totally. And one of the accusations that slipped out of it was that Biden had taken baths or showers with his daughter. Oh, shit. Uh, because one sentence in there, she said, um, that she felt like she had been sexualized as a child. And uh, and she wrote, well, taking baths with my dad probably didn't help. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's insane. I read that earlier today. And so this is a big thing because the Department of Justice is now trying to put the woman who stole the diary in prison for uh, stealing that diary. So she was going to just get uh, some sort of, uh, some sort of, uh, you know, parole or something, not parole, but probation or something. 
But now the Department of Justice is seeking prison time for Amy Harris, the woman who stole the diary of the president's daughter, Ashley Biden, and sold it to conservative media site Project Veritas for tens of thousands of dollars before the 2020 election. Wow. According to the Department of Justice, Harris was temporarily staying at the Delray Beach, Florida residence of Ashley Biden in September 2020 when she stole the diary containing highly personal entries as well as tax records, a cell phone, and family photographs. Harris enlisted the defendant, Robert Kurlander, to assist her in selling the collected material. Man, if you're famous, they'll do you, bro. Look out. Money doesn't save all situations. Project Veritas, based uh, in New York, paid Harris uh, and Kurlander $20,000 each for the diary and other materials the pair returned to Florida to obtain. Project Veritas is a controversial media outlet known for sting operations, sending its staffers undercover to record sources and capture what they say is the true story behind the headlines. In November, the Department of Justice raided two locations tied to Project Veritas and the organization founder, James O'Keefe. Project Veritas never published the diary, but a different website did. O'Keefe, who said he received the diary from tipsters who found it abandoned in a hotel room, said he did not publish it because he could not verify its authenticity. In a Tuesday letter to Judge Laura Swain, federal prosecutors requested that the court impose a sentence of four months to 10 months of imprisonment for Harris, followed by three years of supervised release. Damn, that's harsh. Prosecutors had previously asked for six months of home confinement, followed by three years of supervised release. Federal prosecutors said in a letter that revised the sentencing recommendation comes after Harris has delayed her sentencing hearing date 12 times. So she didn't have to serve any time. She just has to do home arrest. That's what they originally, the prosecutors originally asked for, but she pissed the prosecutors off. Oh, and so snap. now, and this is how she pissed them off right here. She, uh, she, um, delayed her sentencing hearing 12 times. Her sentencing hearing date, she delayed it 12 times for reasons the prosecutors described as inadequate. Uh, Harris's initial sentencing was set for December 6, 2022. We're now in 2024. Harris prosecutor said sometimes she gave excuses that they later found to be untrue, including oh, saying she could not find child care. In one circumstance, the government later learned that the father with whom Harris shares custody of her children was available to care for the children on the specific dates. Of in course. That Harris was ordered to appear in court. Prosecutors of also course. expressed frustration with Harris's failure to secure a valid identification, which they said, Harris knew was necessary in order to travel. She said at other points that she was sick but failed to produce the medical records demanded by the court. The defendant has repeatedly and consistently engaged in tactics to improperly delay this proceeding, including misleading the court with false information to justify belated and unmerited requests for adjournments, refusing to appear when directed, and failing to comply with court orders to disclose... uh, to disclose or produce certain information. <laughs> You're just jerking the cars around. So through this uh, pattern of behavior, the defendant has shown a complete disregard for the court's orders and for the orderly administration of this judicial proceeding. At bottom, the defendant's flagrant disrespect for the law, including the orders of this court, even after pleading guilty in this case, demonstrates an abdication of responsibility for her conduct and strongly uh, militates for an incarceratory sentence. Uh, I like that word, militates. I've never seen that before. Mm. Federal prosecutors wrote in the Tuesday letter to the court, in particular, the defendant is shown to be completely unmenable to court supervision such that a sentence involving merely probation will not be sufficient. She ain't even acting right before the probation to deter the defendant from continuing to flout the law. So they are pissed off at her. And whereas they were going to let her just go, now they want to put her in jail. SSW yeah. says, you know, so contempt of court, that gets us common folk tossed in jail. I was just getting ready to say that. <laughs> As Mike just cut into your, your, I was like, Mike, if this was you or I? Dude, we'd be downhill real quick. 12 times? Can you really delay a court proceeding 12? I can't get child care. No way. 
no way. <laughs> and then, of course, it comes down to, well, the, the father was available, but she made excuses, of course. I mean, I saw that shit coming, too. Steve Ruger, who, who has worked in courts for the last 20 years, he said, I would have been locked up on site. <laughs> yep. Yep. He's, yep. He's, It'd be hard he's not to. He's worked in courts forever. He's uh, some kind of marshal or something in the courts. And uh, he says that would never go down. So anyway, I was just trying to wonder what the hell all of this uh, this Ashley Biden's diary stuff was. That's wild. I, that's the first I heard of it. So I'm glad that you brought it up. This is uh, this is a fact check right here uh, that I found. Posts claim contents of Ashley Biden's diary have been verified. So when this diary first came out, mm. everybody said, oh, that's fake a news. fake. That's BS. Fake it ain't news. real. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and so Snopes went deep into trying to determine. Fact check it. That's good. Respect. So a diary authored by U.S. President Joe Biden's daughter, Ashley Biden, describes inappropriate actions taken towards her by her father when she was a child. Oh, the wow. in question were found in the so-called leaked pages from Ashley Biden's diary, which had been discovered in a former residence and was later sold to the right-wing sting operation, Project Veritas, whose founders said the diary's authenticity could be confirmed. Now, the Project Veritas in itself is, uh, you know, controversial. They do all kinds of stuff. Like, if I remember right, they one time <laughs> uh, taped um, some of uh, the people at um, Planned Parenthood oh, who uh, were selling, they were, they were selling stem cells or something like that from aborted babies i believe it and they got i think it was project veritas that got these people to uh admit it uh if it wasn't project veritas it was someone like them uh Crazy. and so they go up and they put hidden microphones on people and they pose to be somebody buying uh infant stems cells and stuff and they're just they're hell on democrats they're hell on democrats they stay in democrat uh in the Democrats' butt. So uh, people say that they're a hack group. People say that they're uh, a great group. So to sell this to them already would, would piss off them. So uh, anyway, the so-called uh, Project Veritas people uh, got this thing. The quote in questions in, in question was, were the, the quotes in question were found in the so-called leak pages. Um, that was uh, leaked to Project Veritas, whose founder didn't print it, of course, because he said he couldn't uh, confirm the authenticity. While there is strong evidence the diary does exist, no source has authenticated its contents or the contents of the pages published online. On April 5th, 2024, a far-right conspiracy peddling account on X, formerly Twitter, posted an old video with audio of a phone call between Ashley Biden, the daughter of U.S. President Joe Biden, and operatives of Project Veritas, a political organization that claims to practice journalism. Operatives, they said. Uh, so this is uh, some August 1 footage that where they leaked, uh, and uh, confirming that the, her leaked diary was legitimate, which also verifies that Joe Biden sexually assaulted her uh, I don't know about all that, but anyway, this is what they said. As Snopes discussed in detail in March 2023, the phone call is part of a suite of evidence that suggests Project Veritas came into possession of the diary that authentically belonged to Ashley Biden. Project Veritas nevertheless withheld the public uh, publication of the document. Instead, a month before the November 2020 U.S. presidential election, a right-wing blog named The National File published what is claimed was a copy of the complete diary. The 30 of the 39 year old daughter of Joe Biden, an often cited page from that leaked diary, which chronicled its author's addiction recovery in intimate detail, makes reference to sexual trauma and poses questions in search of an explanation for being hypersexualized at a young age, along with mentions of not liking to visit a certain family's house, being sexualized when, with a female friend. And having sex with friends at a young age, the author noted, taking showers with my dad probably was not appropriate. Wow. Taking showers. Yeah. 
That's very odd. Take yourself with my dad, and then she put in quote in quote uh, in uh, parentheses. Probably not appropriate. So just this one little blurb of a sentence. Yep. <laughs> is enough. That's enough. Well, it's enough to raise some eyebrows. Yeah. Yeah. Although they say none of this can really be confirmed, or this, that, and the other, but this these people claim to have a a tape where they talked to her on the phone. And she confirmed it. Here it is right here. Here's oh, the tape. Shit. Uh, oh, it don't look like it's playing, but it's that's where it's supposed to be. You might it have to refresh it. It ain't playing. Let's see. Nope. Weird. Yeah, but yeah. Oh, so. it's a screenshot of the Twitter post. Oh, is whatever. that what it is? Yeah. Uh, the screenshot. Oh. Okay, yeah, it's a screenshot of the Twitter post. So, yeah. That's radical. Interesting, huh? Is that crazy? Totally, totally crazy. Yeah, man. Damn, so, dude. But I I just wanted to comment on the taking showers with your child portion. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't see that as right. No, me neither. But I mean, I understand also what Hardwire was saying too. Like, if you're a single father, you know, and you have a baby, of course you're going to have to bathe the baby, but you're not in the shower with, you know, naked in the shower with her. You know what I mean? Like, that's crazy. Well, you know, for, for my daughter, I had her mother. So that was. Not something I ever had right. to That's to deal with. Here. If, if you don't, if you ain't got no mother, then things may be a little different for you. Right. Yeah. So there you go. Ah. Well, fair. they didn't prosecute the lady for selling a fake diary. Nope. Yes, they did. They prosecuted her for the the selling of it. Yeah, for the stealing of it and all that. Oh, good. Okay, then I missed. Yeah, that. that's why she's getting jail time. Now, well, she didn't really get any jail time, right? She's well, going to be want. serving house arrest. No, they they they're asking for jail time. Oh, they're asking for it. Got you. Yeah. That that part I missed. Yeah. Crazy Fanny though. Willis over here, Fannie Willis has more trouble. What? One of Donald's co-defendants in his Georgia election interference case has threatened to launch legal action against Fannie Willis if she does not step off the case by noon today oh wow well, she's only got two minutes uh eight minutes left yeah for real now here's what what i find troubling all right uh anyway by noon eight by noon today he said fanny willis's officers provided the atlanta journal constitution with a recording of a phone call willis made the same day to attorney carlos jr salvador who is floyd's attorney and an unrelated criminal i, I don't know what they're talking about here I don't want to put a black woman in jail, he says, but if Fanny does not recuse herself from the case by noon on Monday, I may have no other choice than to pursue all lawful remedies. Um, here's my problem with this whole thing. Um, if she's done something wrong, why wouldn't you just put her in jail anyway? If she If she gets off the case, you won't put her in jail? But you still got a criminal. But you still did the crime. Yeah. So why are we why are we taking it easy on Fanny if she just gets off the case? Like that doesn't make no sense. It's kind of like any other plea. You know what I mean? Like, oh, if you do this and give us this, then we're gonna reduce your time. You know what I mean? Nah, I, I don't see it as that. Uh Floyd posted part of an article purportedly from the Atlanta Journal Constitution suggesting that Willis's office shared a recording of a conversation. Oh, that's what this is about. Uh, Willis had with his attorney, Charles J.R. Salvador, in an unrelated criminal case in Maryland. Oh, so he's going after her for something that doesn't have a damn thing to do with Trump's case at all. Floyd suggested that Willis's office may have violated the Maryland Wiretap Act under which it is unlawful to record any private in-person conversation or telephone communication unless you are a party to that conversation and have the permission of all the parties involved. That is a law here. Uh, while the majority of the state 
states have one party consent law laws that allow a conversation to be recorded so long as one person agrees. Um, there are 11 states, including Maryland, that require two party consent. Under Maryland's Wiretap Act, according, recording a private conversation without consent uh, from both parties is illegal uh, and punishable by up to five years in prison or a fine of ten thousand dollars. Oh, so or both, yeah. Oh, so so what they're trying to do is go at her in a roundabout kind of way because they're pissed off. Um, um, uh, so they're going to go after her from another state and try to put her in jail unless she yep, gets off. State to state is kind of weird too the way that works because one state could be different law than the other, and then which one takes precedence? You know, it's it's kind of interesting. Wow, man, that is one messy. That case is gone from. That's extremely messy. Mess to mess to mess to mess. It's just like a Diddy situation, just mess after mess after mess. Hey, yeah. you, what do you think about Mike Tyson fighting Jake Paul? I think that he's going to have a run for his money. Who? Mike or Jake? Mike. Uh, Mark my words. You think Jake's going to get in that? I get... think it's going to be way more fair than you guys think. Well, Jake has been strapping up now, and he's getting better. Oh, he's serious about it. He's very serious. I mean, though he came from the YouTube side, he's very serious about it. He's not joking. He's not doing it for look. He no, means he's it. doing it for that purse. Yeah, absolutely. That that absolutely. purse is real. Um, it's absolutely real. He's getting a better purse than people that, that have been in the game forever. I know. Um, I mean, so, you're fighting Mike Tyson. I mean, it's going to be a big money shot right there. Mike Tyson has the power to now, I mean, has the ability now to make some real money. Look at those gloves. Look at, are, are his gloves his tattoo around his eye? Is that what that totally. is? Totally. That's so funny. <laughs> That's remember, funny. Whether it is or isn't, it's hysterical either way. I remember when he got, yeah, that's his eye tattoo. That's so funny. I remember when he got that eye tattoo, everybody thought he was absolutely crazy. Now he's crazily laughing all the way to the bank. Uh, somebody picks Jake Jake Paul. Anthony Joshua said Jake Paul will destroy Mike. Uh, all I can tell you is this. I am 61. Mike is 56. Uh, I rose to the level of 8th uh, Dan in the martial arts world. I, I don't think I'm fighting at that level right now. <laughs> Right. Mike is going to, it'd be like, Mike, I don't think I can beat you up. You're 28. Like, I don't. I when you, don't when you're young, you have a lot of advantages in that regard. Yeah. I might be able to get you out in the first 35, 40 seconds. If it goes it, beyond that. Right. <laughs> right? If you connect, like, if you connect, it's going to hurt. But if I can, if I can get you out of there in the first. 30, 40 seconds, you know, which is what I'm going to be trying to do. I'm, right. I'm with my now I'm going to allow you to gas yourself out. I'm coming at you with my best 35 seconds totally. ever. I'm coming. Like, you're going to But then you'll it. be winded. You know what I mean? It's kind of yeah, like a well, flying fish. You know, once they yeah. fly, they're done. You know? <laughs> is that it? Yep. yep. They fly once and then now they need a cool down period of 12 hours, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> totally. And then I can't run from you. It's going to be it's horrible. <laughs> that's why old guys pew pew. We, yeah. We, that's very anyway. true. I don't know. I think Mike is going to be um, uh, in for a night. Yeah. And that's, that's what I think is going to happen too. I think it's going to be a good, it's going to be a good fight. Nonetheless, it will be, but I think people underestimate Jake in this particular well, situation. Jake is, Jake is a clown. He has been. Totally. I agree with that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not I'm not saying that he isn't. He totally is. I've watched him be a clown since day one on the internet. But then it really did surprise me that he took it serious, meaning boxing when he got into it. He really meant it. He was like, I'm really going to do this for real. And he did. He's a, he's a big kid. What's he, about six foot two or something? He, he's a big kid. He's a big kid, for sure. 
Uh, Ed says, Black Dragon, you're an overweight biker. He's still on that. He's still an athlete. He wasn't overweight. At, did you see him in the in the movie? He was fat as hell. Yep, exactly. Road rage. That's hysterical. That's the same thing BD says to his wife. I'm coming at you with my best 35 seconds. No, I say 15 yeah. to her. <laughs> you say 15, but, 15 but you really seconds. only get a few. I get you. But I only really get about five. Yeah. I was always told my dad's he's old, so I got about 60 seconds to come to you like hell, and I fight dirty, son. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Old guys usually do fight dirty. Absolutely. I'm trying to get your ass out of there. I'm not trying to be... <laughs> you're not going to take a loss. You know what I mean? An exhibition fight with clauses to prevent the fighters from getting hurt is not a real fight. That's not what they're having, Vernon. He's having a real fight. Yeah. On a real card. So I'm not as good as I once was, but I'm as good once as I ever was. <laughs> uh, I'm as good 60 seconds as I ever was anyway. Right, right. Well, Mike, it's about an hour and 20 minutes into the show. It's probably time to get the hell out of here. Absolutely. Much love to everybody. Thank you all for coming and hanging out with us. Make sure you guys are liking, commenting, uh, sharing, subscribing, all of that kind of stuff. It it really helps us on a different level. We really appreciate you guys. And uh, we're still looking for sponsors as well, guys. Sponsorships, uh, ad space. Stuff like that. Those are things that we're still looking for. We will send out a media kit to you. If you guys have a business, let us know. Uh, DM us, you know, on our Instagram pages. Here's mine at Ball Valve TV. You can follow me there. And then same thing with Black Dragon, uh, Black Dragon Biker TV on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, all of it. Um, and yeah, until tomorrow morning, much love to you guys. Hey, and I'm Black Dragon. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for our new subscribers. Uh, we're not 172,000 subscribers on this thing. We're close to 200,000 subscribers. I am blown away. I'm just absolutely blown away and thankful to you all. So uh, did you see my comment about the USS Thresher? I did not see your comment about the Thresher. Vernon, what did you say about the Thresher? Write it back down because I did not see it. Uh to uh i did not see it i'm looking vernon uh is this the thresher holiday or uh, the thresher uh remembrance day or something it says thresher are you still on vernon uss thresher i guess uh i don't see you vernon so i missed it i missed whatever you said about the thresher um, and I'm looking real quick to see if this is um, it's right here. want to mention April 10th, 1963 USS Thresher was lost at sea taking 120 lives with it this caused a significant change in programs from shipbuilding and repair unrelated but important so uh, uh, the USS Thresher was a uh, submarine that uh, went down uh, after shipyard repair uh, or or refit, it was something that we learned about in the Navy um, and when we were in the submarine service. It was a big thing because it went down with all hands aboard and um, also with maybe about a hundred shipyard workers on there. We we make the shipyard workers go out to sea with us uh, after they work on our boat. So if we don't come back up, they don't come back up either. But anyway, actually, their real reason for being out there is to make sure everything that they did was say, uh, was correct. And there were some significant issues that weren't fixed. It, it started what was known as the subsafe program. And the subsafe program is a certain way of quality assurance that uh, submarines uh, uh, um, uh, shipbuilding, submarine shipbuilding is, is done to make sure that welding is done correctly and all kinds of other things uh that have to pass this subsafe program so um this was a big thing in the uh for me coming up in the nuclear powered submarine navy uh and people like um vernon as well uh who um came up in that same era with me and i'm sure it's probably still very important um it was found in uh, six pieces on the bottom of the uh, Atlantic Ocean. 
So all 129 personnel aboard were killed. It was um, a horrible thing. So to my brothers of the Finn who went down and um, we remember you solemnly, uh, us brothers who were dolphins and sailed the seven seas and submarines. I appreciate you, Bolo, for reminding us of that. Uh, and we appreciate every single solitary one of you. I'm Black Dragon. That's my two cents. Love to hear your two cents in the comic section below. Thanks for tuning in and get skinny. Also, prepare yourself. Prepare yourself to take the helm as president of your mighty motorcycle club by delving into the pages of Black Dragon's newest book, The President's Bible, Chronicle One, Principles of Motorcycle Club Leadership. There you will learn to advance your skills in applying the 14 scientific principles of leadership similar to those taught to officers in the United States Naval Service. Available in hardcover, paperback, and ebook, get yours today on Amazon, Kindle, or order it at your local bookstore. Order your autographed copy from blackdragonsgear.com. Be the best motorcycle club president you can be. Get the book. Get Black Dragon's first book, The Prospects Bible, to learn how to join a motorcycle club. It has been an Amazon number one bestseller for the past seven years and is required reading for over 3,000 motorcycle clubs worldwide. This book is a must-have for new people venturing onto the motorcycle club set. It will teach you how to prepare yourself for service to the motorcycle club nation and show you how to qualify a motorcycle club to be worthy of your service. Available on Amazon, Kindle, and for order at your local bookstore. Get your autograph copy at blackdragonsgear.com. Be the best motorcycle club prospect you can be. Get Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Black Dragons Market TV at its best. At its best.
Oh yeah, and don't forget to get his prospect Bible book. So proud of him. Man, he just don't know. He's a real, a real legend. <laughs> and y'all know it, and I know it. That's right, Black Dragon. That's right. Glad I met you, my friend. Black Dragon. I'm the Midnight Ghost Rider. Dove V, y'all. Love you, Black Dragon. Peace. And uh, get skinny. Like and share. Goodbye. Goodbye.